host, welcome, and I'm so excited to see you all today. I'm Lena, your companion in your dental dream journey, and today we have with us a very special guest, Nidhi Oja from Boston University, Henry Goldman School of Dental Medicine. And you know what? Our association is a decade long. And surprisingly, we are the only two students out of four from our dental school who really made it till here. So I'm already feeling nostalgic. How about you? Hi. Hi, Lena. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here today. And it is my pleasure to share my experience with everyone. Thank you, Lena. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you that you make some time available and, you know, guide everyone in this tough and competitive journey. Oh, that's so great because I was in the same place, you know, the last year. So I want to help people who are going through the same. That's so, amazing. yeah. Much, much appreciated. So can Thank you start? You by telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey till here, like which country do you come from? Why did you choose DMD and why US? Okay. So uh, I want to start with the fact that I'm from India and in India, I'm from state of Rajasthan. Um, Rajasthan is full of culture and heritage. So the one thing, two things that I learned being in Rajasthan is this excellent food and the beautiful, lovely folk dance. So I really uh, enjoyed my uh, journey of dentistry as we are in the same college. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know and I miss the food so much. So yeah, much. Yeah, me too. I missed it. And I'm so happy to see you here like me too. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm feeling nostalgic. I'm like, I'm remembering all our days earlier where I used to come and talk to you. Okay, see my mounting is this right? I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. I've never, I've, I can never imagine that in USA one day we will be like. <laughs> yeah, right? That's amazing. Yeah, but that's I know true. how much struggle does it take from, you know, coming from a country, like a state that is so, so retarded about US education, about counseling. We had no idea about how to even get the visa. So I would love uh, if you can share something about how you started thinking about, you know, that you should apply to dental schools in US and how, how did it start? Okay, uh, so it started like um, my brother, he lives in US. So he was in USA uh, since like 2013. So um, I visited USA just to, uh, you know, to meet him. But when I came here and when I met one of my uh, batchmates, uh, Dr. Ashish Nayak, who was uh, uh, my batchmate during my dentistry. So um, he, uh, when I asked him, so he was like, wow, dentistry in USA is so fascinating. So I got inspired by his words. So I decided to uh, go through this NBD part one and part two. And as I was here, so I utilized that time. And I studied like for part one, I think uh, three to four months and again for part two, three months. So I completed both the, the part one and part two in 2019. And uh, in this way, and then I decided that I should have some exposure uh, of dentistry in USA, which is very important thing. So uh, uh, I want to tell all those who are viewing this uh, video that uh, it is very critical part, the application committee, they will see that if you have some exposure in USA. So I started with the uh, observeship because I was in my uh, uh, visitor visa that time. So I can't do any job here. So I started with observeship. So I observed in uh, a dental clinic for like uh, five months yeah five months I observed and it was a great experience I came to know how the dentistry in India is different from in US yeah. so I would recommend all of who are coming from uh, other country to uh, you should have some exposure of dentistry here so after that I also um, I started my TOEFL preparation also uh, everyone says like you have to be like get above 100 but mine was not above 100 in TOEFL <laughs> yeah it's tough to get it it's basically more about orienting yourself to the exam so it's tough to score that much score in the first attempt I can understand <laughs> yeah so uh but yeah but it was uh, average marks so I was little worried about that but I went but nothing happened. I got selected. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's what all matters, right? At the end. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so 
Uh, so I finished my graduation and my post-graduation both in India. In 2016, I finished my post-graduation in oral and maxillofacial pathology. And after that, I worked for some years as a dentist in hospital setting so that I can see the uh, biopsy tissues under the microscope, you know, my oral pathology work. And after that, I got married and came to the U.S. in 2019. And then I started uh, applying for dental schools. Yeah. So, um, and I don't know what to say because that time COVID, lock, lockdown, all those things yeah. happened. <laughs> I know, it was the tough phase. And uh, it was, it was so good. happy for you that uh, you made it during even that tough phase. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because at that time, it was very hard for me to get the recommendation letters from schools in India because they yeah. were all closed. Yeah. So that was the biggest challenge that I had to face. Yeah. That time. I remember, like from our school, the good part was because not many people were exposed to go to US. So our, I remember my dean actually asked me to write something and give him hints on what he should write. It was not like a normal template, which other schools actually give, like for a dean LOR, right? So I had this extra advantage where I could ask him to write as much as he wants to write about me. So yeah, that's good. That's that's very important because uh, they considered these uh, LORs. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's uh, they should be uh, it should be written very good. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So um, after that, um, yeah, that that time I started applying, but I was late. So I have applied like for two years. So that was my first year I applied. Mm -hmm. But I was late because my LORs were not there. And, you know, and I just got married. So, you know, half of the time I couldn't study yeah. So for this capit prep and all. So after uh, two months, like in February, I started uh, doing this capit thing. And in March, the capit cycle opened. So, and I didn't have any recommendation letters and all. So I applied very late, like in May. Uh -huh. And I got a call from Pittsburgh University, uh -huh. uh, but due to some circumstances, I was not able to take admission that year. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> then again, I reapplied the second year. And at that time, I decided that now I will uh, prepare my CAPIT application patiently. Uh -huh. I mean, taking all the aspects one by one because it is very important part. So right. after that, I applied for that and <laughs> I got accepted. So currently I am about to complete my first year of this 24 month program at BU. And uh, let's see, I mean, the, uh, you know, like my journey, it, it has been filled with, uh, you know, more ups and downs and that is how life works. <laughs> but I'm happy and grateful and excited for the future. Yeah, definitely. And that is why I am interviewing you because we want to know ups and downs because I don't like to capture all, you know, good stories, all the success stories, because everyone has their ups and downs going in the life. And it is so, so important for a few people, especially the viewers who are watching this video, that everyone has it, everyone crosses it, and you will all reach to that point, uh, some point in your life. Exactly. Because the... Uh... The area from where I am, like in India, Rajasthan, as we know that girl education doesn't matter much. Right. But I'm really thankful to my parents. They were so liberal. They helped me a lot in completing my post-graduation also in India. And they they were always like encouraging me to study more and more. So I'm really thankful to my parents and my brothers. <laughs> they, Amazing. They're so supportive. Still, they are very supportive for yeah. me so imagine when you are saying you want to settle in texas yeah i can imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Since tell me brother... about um, your interview process like how many batches does bu calls and i know like they are very diverse uh when it comes to calling their past candidates as well as the current applicants how does that work so the school has a rolling admission mm -hmm. uh, so and there are several batches Mm -hmm. And they usually send invitations like every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And the interview begins like in August and it uh, till January, they finish all the interviews. Uh, so I do not have the exact number, but there are many batches. Mm -hmm. So um, 
like i have applied very late it's it's on the deadline i have applied so i haven't I, i'm so surprised that they read my application because people used to say that they will not read your application if you are so late in applying but they read my application they called me for interview in december uh, last week i think yeah and uh, so don't uh, worry if you are late just apply just give a chance to yourself um, and uh, i would say like in august they start to, uh, taking interviews and and you can't say it's unpredictable like 100 seats are there and they even call people from last years if they, someone has deferred their seat so it's very unpredictable so take a chance don't don't feel that you are very late or i mean it's it's good to apply early but it's not bad to apply late also if there is a chance take it yeah it's like a win win there is no loss in applying even at least try a chance yeah. that's very well said and how was your interview day like what how many people interviewed you and what do they normally ask oh so my interview day was amazing because that was a lucky day it changed my life a lot it was turning point for me so first i was very scared when i was like going for interview and it was virtual actually at that time also they were taking virtual interviews so i didn't get the chance to have a trip of the school and all those things uh, but i enjoyed the interview process a lot the interviewer they were so friendly they were more like talking to us it was more like conversation so they asked me first about myself then they want to know about my family about my country about my culture what experiences i have about my research experiences then they asked me what is the difference between the dentistry what i felt like in us and in india mm-hmm. uh then they asked me if i have any teaching experience and uh, they asked me why i want to join bu what's right. what things attracted me in yeah. bu so uh, mostly they asked about also like about my family will i be able to leave my family and come here for like oh, two oh, years so cute yeah, yeah. even if, uh, the fraternity is thinking about that yeah they look yeah. all the expects like if students they will be able to come and join and uh, apart from that they asked me about like how i embrace the diversity. university right yeah, yeah. because they hundred students yeah hundred so students from students from, from every country. part so yeah. it's the very important aspect for them to judge a person right so uh, they ask me questions about like uh, what they ask yeah so all these things they uh, mainly they focused on like how i am as a person right uh, and like what i have experienced till now in my life right. so they want to know what is my background they want to they just want to know we have basic knowledge of dentistry it's more of behavior yeah. uh, uh interview yeah. 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 yeah yeah so let me ask you what aspects of bu actually attracted you <laughs> first of all the 100 seats of bu <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the probability of getting in is more right <laughs> yeah yeah that's why that's why i got attracted that there are 100 seats uh second thing in bu is that the cutting edge technology it is digital even you if you look at the simulation learning centers we have a microscope as well as scanners in every section and like if we are doing tooth prep we can check those tooth prep in the serex software without any faculty we can check that we have done it wrong, right or wrong and you know all those cat cam millings and all those things yeah. so it's a very ge- good opportunity to learn uh, new digital things mm-hmm. and also uh, bu has uh, will give a certificate for nitrous oxide sedation invisalign and also the botox training botox injection training and also so that is very fascinating because people used to spend a uh, thousand of dollars in ce yeah, courses to learn these right. things yeah 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 but here we can learn and we also get the opportunity we will get the opportunity to uh, place implant in the patients um we right. have that robot also that robot system and uh, na- implant navigation system in the clinics that's amazing so, yes there and their uh, treatment center are newly they have uh, equipped That's with dent splicerona so that is also an amazing part so yes digitally be used wow and you know like 
diversity is also like 100 students and we have almost i think like 25 students from uh, india pakistan then uh, some student uh, 25 other students from uh, you know spanish uh, hispanics latins and uh, south americans mm -hmm. from arab countries few from africa and europe so it's it's and they also uh, recognize lgbtq's uh, community mm -hmm. students so that is, so the that they it, I mean, the people from various culture, language, it's good to learn because yeah. when their festivals come and we come to know, oh, okay, so this is Navroz, it's the Persian New Year, which, oh, yeah, uh, which recently, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I never, uh, you know, I have heard about it, but I never knew why they put garlic and why they put dates together. So, it's yeah, good they, to, they, they decorate it. So, they, yeah, that, yeah so that's. Yeah. that's very good and the uh, ramadan month is going yeah. on for right. so that is also like we we get the opportunity to, to attend iftar parties with yeah. them yeah so every fun. yeah every culture has its own you know uniqueness and it's very good to learn about all those things so i learned that aspect of you also yeah that's amazing but and i've also heard that uh, the preceptorship that BU offers is quite amazing and feasible. So do you think it's very important factor to get in the school? I would say yes, it is an important factor because, you know, like BU is very competitive to get in. Uh, there are uh, the large because of the large class size and, you know, the Boston city, it is the major attraction for yeah. everyone. Yeah. And the program is also like for uh, only for two years, 24 months. So a lot of candidate applies to this school. So many of my classmates, they are some are postgraduate, uh, some have done Ph.D., and some have academic papers uh, written uh, to their name and and even some students are there who uh, who did not practice uh, dentistry after graduation so it is a mixture of all kind of you know candidates so it depends on what the qualification of candidate is in your batch who are applying and from your country also right. because they have some seats reserved for different different country mm -hmm. So I would say to, you know, because of this competition, it is very important that you should do something different. So yeah, doing preceptorship is, yes, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's a it's very good thing because it will add up to resume. It will good, yeah. uh, give a good yeah, impact. I think personally, it's an opportunity to get to know the faculties, to exactly. get into the academics, to see the exactly. infrastructure. And of course, like there'll be time when there, there'll be a good problem, right? Like, uh, we all had more than one interviews uh, with us. So when it comes to decide whether we want to go to Boston or USC or Pittsburgh, of course, that helps, right? Because exactly. how often the personality. You can make network with the people, as you said, yeah. with the faculty. Yeah, that helps. That helps a lot. And if you haven't got exposure of dentistry in US, you can get that exposure here. Right. with preceptorship. So we're talking about Boston as a city. How much is... Uh, approximate cost of living uh, if it if you are living close by the university so close by university is expensive mm -hmm. like three thousand dollars for uh, you can say for a studio apartment oh, <laughs> so that's expensive. Yeah. three thousand dollars per month for a studio apartment if you are living in a good community like yeah. a good building right. uh, but like if you live far away like I live like 15 to 20 minutes far away from my school which is good I don't feel like uh, so I live in BU housing which is also a one great option because yeah. I have one BHK and I'm paying like two thousand dollars per month okay. and electricity internet all is included in that oh, we so don't have to pay then, yeah. yeah 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 so yeah so I think it's not that but uh, yeah, it is expensive a little compared to other uh, cities, uh, but it's not that bad. Yeah, that's nice. And can you also tell us like how your day looks like in D3 and uh, like is it because I know yours batch is not integrated batch, You yours is a huge batch. So how much they focus on didactics and then the clinical patient pool? So uh, they focus on didactics much because the first year is all we have preclinical as well as didactics. And we will start our clinic like in uh, June. 
Mm-hmm. or end of may we will start our clinic so by that time they will uh, we have finished our pre clinicals and uh, now we are going to uh, have our cdca preparation uh, pre clinical simulations yeah so and along with that our didactic courses going on and merging is like lectures are merged with d2 and d3 students now as we are first year as a student so we are with d2 and d3 students in the lectures but our class is like of 100 so in pre clinical like in simulation lab we are on the as there because we can't like uh, 200 student can't come <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's good like the uh, it's good to learn because yes we have read all those things before but uh, like implantology we have implantology course so there are so many new things that we are learning in that mm-hmm. course we right. have preclinical implantology also in which uh, they teach us how to use the software how to you uh, have that digital impressions right. done and all those things so it's it's really good i mean you have extra knowledge for yeah, that yeah, definitely i always yeah. say uh, of course international has to struggle so much to get into the school because it's new country new culture new type of education but we also have a platform where we have practiced and we know what we missed in our last education so now when they are teaching we'll pay more attention to okay well, this is something which i missed into clinical practice exactly exactly so, because the implanting we haven't done in our bachelors right right yeah. like implants are one then even invisalign is something that they teach yes. or advanced courses smile designing so those are definitely uh, the cream on the bread so we exactly. should definitely grab that opportunity and learn as much as we can exactly so that is what i'm learning and each and every day when i go to school i'm like today i'm going to learn something new so yeah. it's so exciting it's very exciting actually it is <laughs> and the faculty is so good you will really enjoy i mean they have if you want to take advantage you can take i mean take maximum advantage because they are so knowledgeable and they are so easily approachable that you can do lot of things yeah. there are many things only the thing is that we have limited time, time. but yeah. we should manage that time yeah <laughs> what whatever we can make the most of our time we should do it yeah exactly exactly so if you have like one piece of advice for any prospective international student watching this video what would that be so to all the viewers i would like to say it is never too late to start and when you matriculate is not important like we have students as young as 25 years and some are as old as 50 years so never give up regardless of the rejections some might get into school sooner and others later but all will pass all will graduate that matters so do not despair mix your hard work with positive thinking and networking networking is also important and and that's it and before you know it you are graduating yeah definitely time just just flies we we'll never flies. know and once you are in the school of course it's difficult it's hectic but uh, we'll all pass through because we'll have people studying with us we'll have guidance path so it's just you know pile on pile so you don't yeah have- you won't get time even to think all the yeah. things yeah right. every time you have exams you have assignments you have quizzes to do you have something to do every time so yeah it's it's a hard work but you will get that thing the benefit after that so i'm i, I used to think that i've reached here with so you know it's so of uh, so many things i have yeah. faced so now i will do it like properly i want to utilize all this time to and so effect. did you by making this <laughs> video with us because i know there are so many uh, mystery going around about boston even when i was applying i was like okay are they still calling the last year applicants should i apply should i not so thank you so much for giving your time and uh, i'll wrap up by saying uh congratulations to whosoever are still applying have prepared their application but still as nidhi boss said it's not the end time just keep applying keep your face up we are all living different journeys so don't compare yourself with anyone and just move <laughs> yeah thank you lena so much thank you all thank giving time you. to i'll see you again bye bye see you bye best of luck